Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So it looks like Sony has finally given in and increased the price of the PlayStation 5 all around the world. We'll have details of that, plus the latest in the Famitsu sales. But before we get started, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so we can keep you up to date with gaming news. And there's just five days left to enter in for that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Special Edition content, so if you're interested in that, you can check the link in the description. Now let's get started. First, if you remember about a month ago, Sony had an earnings call where someone asked them about the possibility of a price increase for the PlayStation 5 due to the increased cost of materials. And all that was replied back was about a potential price increase for the PS5. At this point in time, there's nothing specific I can share with you about prices. And of course, this led everybody into speculation that the PlayStation 5 was going to get a price increase. Well, it looks like that finally got announced yesterday. Let's take a look at the announcement from blog.playstation.com. PlayStation 5 price to increase in select markets due to global economic environment, including high inflation rates. So yesterday, Sony said that it had, quote, made the difficult decision to raise the PlayStation 5 prices in Europe parts of North America and Japan effective immediately. However, in the US, the price remains unchanged. Now this price increase is up to 12.5% in certain areas. And you can see in their announcement, they give the listing here of all the prices and what they've changed to. Now they said the price is not increasing in the US because the dollar tends to be a little stronger than the rest of these currencies. However, I will continue to note that it seems like the Horizon Bundle, the more expensive one, seems to be the only one that's widely available now. And that may just be because the version without the bundle sells out quicker, but I really don't see it ever going up much at all. It is still my belief that Sony is trying to make up the difference in the cost of materials by bundling in an extra game, and in essence, forcing you to buy a game if you want a PlayStation 5 in order to help recoup costs. Now, most experts are saying that this price increase won't affect Sony's sales at all because there's so much pent up demand right now for the console. And Sony is also unlikely to adjust their sales forecast of 18 million units this fiscal year. So it's kind of a shame for people in these regions where this price increase is happening or basically going to get a late tax for not getting the console in the first two years. But let me know what you think. Are you in one of these areas that's affected? Have you already got a PlayStation 5? Or are you just going to continue to hold out maybe till that Pro version comes out? And finally, let's take a look at the sales numbers from Famitsu coming out of Japan. So this week on the software sales, we see all Switch games in the top 10, and we only have one new entry here, we'll get to that in a second. But in first place, we have Nintendo Switch Sports, followed by Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, making a pretty big jump there to number 2. Then we have Kirby and the Forgotten Land, followed by Minecraft, and then Monster Hunter Rise, plus Sunbreak set. And then we have Kirby's Dream Buffet download card at number 6, so I'll get back to that in a second. And then we have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Ring Fit Adventure, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 still coming in at number 9, and then in 10th place we have Mario Party Superstars. So going back to that Kirby's Dream Buffet, this is a digital only game that was released this past week. But it did come in in 6th place, and that's just based off of the retail sale of those digital download cards. So not too bad of a showing for a digital-only game. Now let's take a look over at the hardware sales, and we have Switch OLED followed by Switch, and then we have the PlayStation 5 in there in the 3rd spot, followed by Switch Lite, and then we have the Xbox Series S, and followed by the Xbox Series X, which actually sold a little more than it usually does. And then finally, the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition, and that pretty much rounds out all the current gen stuff. And the PlayStation 5 sales are down a little bit. It averaged about 22,000 for the past two weeks, so coming in just over 14,000 is a little bit lower than what we've seen recently. 
And that's all we have for today. Did anything we cover catch your attention? Do you think the PlayStation 5 is going to see a price increase in the U.S.? Or do you think Sony will just continue to do a bundle in order to recoup the difference? And did you find it surprising to see Kirby's Dream Buffet download card in the top 10 for software sales in Japan? And does it make you wonder how well the actual digital sales did? Drop a comment about those topics or anything else we covered today. I want to thank you for watching, have a great weekend, and be good.